stop by Rap Duran at the food truck. This is actually new for the season. There's actually a food truck that's usually at the Chevron that's across the street, but it's a Mexican one. This one's actually a coffee and breakfast shop. And look what I got. A breakfast burrito with egg, potato, and cheese. You can get meat, which is bacon, steak, or sausage, but they were out. It's a little later. They have a avocado tomatillo that goes with the burrito. Looks yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Mm. Jeff got the same thing. They're good sized burritos. Ooh, and some iced coffee. Thank you. Oh, the cold brew. What's the difference? Oh, one's already cold brewed and the, the, the other one's yeah. iced coffee. Yeah, okay. Heavier oh, heavier cream. Okay, nice. Awesome. Okay. Oh, I see. The ice cube is actually coffee. Oh my god, that's definitely filling. Was yours filling? Okay, Kellogg's just like staring at you with his wanting eyes. He's like, I want your burrito. This cold brew coffee is strong. I don't know if it's espresso or whatever, but it's strong. Little sips. They're doing a controlled burn, but look how smoky it is in here. They're trying to get rid of all the dried vegetation from the winter. It's better if they have, um, this prevents the forest fires. We decided to come up to Kendrick Park and the Watchable Wildlife Trail. It's our first time here this season. It's a bit cold up here because we're, we're about 8,000 feet elevation. It's a nice day, but a bit overcast. I always love to walk through this wooded area. It's very peaceful. There's no signs of spring yet here at this elevation. My favorite time of walking through here is usually early summer. That's when the flowers start coming up. Well, I never noticed this. I knew that there were farmers here, I think in the early 1900s. And this looks like a remnant of something, some kind of cabin. That used to be here. And Jeff was just pointing that out. There's some kind of burn barrel or something right there. Hmm. I don't know if it's a burn barrel. I think it might just be a wash wash barrel or bucket. So it, it doesn't look like well, there's some charcoal in there, but you think it would be a lot more rusty if they actually burnt in it. But you can tell there was some kind of structure here goes all the way around. Pretty big structure, actually. And this is the only thing that really remains. There's a few things here, but the fencing is there used to be potato farmers here in the field. But there's the fencing there that goes all the way down to where we're going to walk to. Okay, there it is. This log corral was built by potato farmers to pen their workhorses. Oh, okay, so it was a corral for horses. Physical remains of the oral history indicate that the area was farmed extensively beginning in the 1920s, yep, early 1900s, and continued until the early 1950s, I think that's what it says. And there's more information. If you want to pause and read. So we are here. And there is a trail that goes here. This is a long trail that goes through my favorite part, which is the Aspen Grove. But you can take this shortcut here and this loops back around and it cuts off the Aspen Grove so you don't go way back there. You can go through here and then just cut back around to the front. This is the old corral is what it says. You are here. Then there's the walkthrough gate up here. And trail access. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of confusing how this is laid out. It should be kind of turned this way going up. So we're here. And you can take your shortcut through here or go this way and go through the aspirin grove that's up there. What else is here? Ponderosa pines, of course. 
Um, that's it, and then 180's over here. Tree down! <laughs> oh, that looks like that recently fell. Well, that's weird. Was that dragged there? Where did that fall from? I don't see the stump. Yeah, I don't see the stump, though. Oh, oh, well, there's one right there. Yeah. Where? Oh, that's where it came from. So only half the tree fell down. I see. Wow. Okay, and then it knocked down that tree over there. Well, not all the way down. It's stuck in that tree up there. But you can get a picture or a better picture of Kendrick Park, which is all this here. There's actually homes here. And since this is such high elevation, this is completely covered in snow in the winter. But I bet it's beautiful. But I wouldn't want to, I don't think I'd want to live up here. There's a lot of snow drifts. And windy. Yeah. Definitely in the winter, uh, 180 is usually closed because of all the snow. Come on, Kellogg. Good boy. Here's a closer shot of the fencing. It's kind of that stacked fencing. Pretty cool. Not sure what the purpose was. If, for, if it was for farm animals or... I'm not sure a horse is. I'm sure a horse could jump right over that. Yeah, definitely. Oh, wait. I never noticed that. Look at that. Oh, burnt down uh, vehicle out there. What is that? It's weird. I've been here several times and have never noticed this. It's an old rusty vehicle. Not sure what kind of vehicle it was, but it had the, the old lights and the fenders that went all the way down and over. Oh, pretty cool. You interested in it, Kellogg? <laughs> what is it, Moo Moo, huh? Come on. <laughs> Trail just keeps on going, but you can see the edge of the Aspen Grove up here because it curves around, comes back on this side. There's some of the Aspens. It's actually not as cold as I thought it would be up at this elevation. I put my jacket on, but I'm, I'm pretty warm. There's an old ponderosa pine stump there that they thought uh, the tree was killed by a lightning strike. But that is mainly what grows here. It's the ponderosa pine, other than the aspen, which we're getting ready to come into the grove. There's fencing out there. I don't know if you can see it, but it is the bob wired, not the wood. And sometimes that prevents wildlife from escaping predators or moving to find better shelter or forage. But pronghorns, sometimes called antelopes, can squeeze underneath the smooth bottom wire. And that's how they escape out of there. It's what they call wild-friendly fencing. But deer and elk can actually jump over the fence. They can, I think, jump up to eight feet. I think what the fencing basically is for is the cattle or crazy dogs like Kellogg trying to dig for... Hey, John. Every time you come here, Look at his muddy, messy face. You do this every time. <laughs> what are you doing, huh? Did you find a mouse? A ground squirrel? <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, it could be. Oh my gosh, you're, you're a mess. Look at your face. Crazy. Getting ready to turn and go into the Aspen Grove. That's the only one not really fenced in. Mostly through 180, they completely fence off the aspen groves, as you can see here. They're pretty high fencing, just to protect them, because there's not a lot of them here left. Because the ponderosa has taken over, usually a fire comes in and clears out the ponderosa and allows the aspen to kind of take over, but I don't think there's been any major fires except that one. Last year that the guy started with his toilet paper. <laughs> Aspens haven't leafed out yet. It's still too early. Is that horse? Horse, I think. Here's the Aspen Grove. You can see all the dead Aspen laying. 
it's everywhere. I actually got an Aspen from Home Depot for $5 because it was broken last season and planted it. No signs of life yet from it, but we'll see. Still early. They are beautiful trees. One of my favorite, actually. Aspens usually do better in a clearing like this because they need plenty of sunlight. Oh, look it. The mullein is starting to come up. It's like furry, <laughs> like a rabbit's ear. Mullen is actually a biannual plant. The second year is when it throws up the bloom stock. Then all the seeds for coming years. It's like foxglove. It lives for just two years, then it dies off. The first year is just foliage, and then second year is the bloom stock. Then it goes to seed, then it dies off, then the new plants come up from the seed. The elk like to chew and rub their antlers on aspen bark, causing the scars you see here. There are a lot of scars on the lower parts of the aspen. Yeah, it's a bit warm, warmer than I definitely thought it was gonna be. Did you see something? What, the holly? Looks like a holly, I believe. Quick fact that you might not have known, young ponderosa pines are called blackjacks because of their dark bark. Here's more information if you want to pause and read. Wow, it takes 160 years for it to start turning into a golden bark. Like these segments here, so they're older than 160 years. So the light ones are over 160 years old. I was wondering why some are dark and some not. It's pretty cool. We're more than halfway around the trail now. It's just a big loop, like I said earlier. This is actually my favorite part of the trail. Kind of reminds me of Colorado a little bit or other places. Got rock hills over here. Actually reminds me of some parts of Tennessee too. This is what I like. This hillside here with all the big boulders. We're almost back to the front. Definitely enjoyed this trail. <laughs> 